So now the time has come to talk about the Super AI Compiler. I'm always really excited to talk about this. In this video, we'll give you an overview of the whole AI Compiler. And in following videos, we'll go into details of each step. So let's hop into it. Okay, so the, the second secret, uh, the first secret, as you remember, was the assembly line. Well, the second secret is the execution system. So you can have an amazing assembly line, but if you can't execute it reliably with high quality and do it quickly and at scale, then what kind of use is it? So let's dive into it now. So the first step is we start executing the data program. And if you remember, the data program breaks us into little tasks. And so what this is about is executing these little tasks. And so the, the first important piece is that we treat every single data point differently. And this is where the analogy to the assembly line diverges a bit because in the assembly line, you're just producing the same car over and over again. And so you don't need to do that. Whereas in machine learning and software 2.0, your data in general is very different. So you can have an image that's extremely noisy, very difficult, or you can have a very simple image. So you need to, in general, treat those differently. And so the first piece of the AI compiler is what we call the router. And what the router does is it has a database of labeling sources. And I'll get into what these labeling sources are in a second. But just uh, imagine humans for the moment. But it can be AI, software functions, et cetera. And so the router has a database of each labeler, and each labeler has three distributions. There's actually 11, but we'll just talk about the three now. So it has a distribution of the labeler's quality. And so you can imagine that if you have a labeler where the distribution has a low standard deviation or low interquartile range and has a high quality, then you're going to want to route to that labor, uh, labeler. But maybe that label is really expensive or really slow. So you need to take into account these two other key variables of, of speed and cost. And those are also distributions. OK, so then based on these three distributions, then the router decides based on your requirements. So maybe somebody wants really high quality, or maybe someone is OK with, this, with let's say, 90% F1 score, but they want it really fast because it's in their production system. Well, based on those constraints, the router decides which labelers to route to. And so now we'll talk about the labeling sources. So the labeling sources aren't just humans, aren't just machines. They're, they're both, they can be machine learning models. They can be humans um, and, and many different types of humans. They can be subject matter experts. They can be your people within your organization. Uh, it can be a mechanical Turk, or you can use a super AI crowd which has different categories and, and different expertise. So you can choose someone who's a medical expert, et cetera. Or you can use software functions. Um, so there's things called labeling functions. Uh, there's a company called Snorkel who we can integrate into. Or if you want to write your own software functions, you can label with that. Because if you think about it, all intelligence is, or all a labeler is doing, is taking an input to an output. And you would say this is highly intelligent if it does that with high quality. And so what we say is we have this substrate independent intelligence assumption, or sometimes we call it abstract intelligence. The router, and in general, the AI compiler, doesn't even need to know whether it's human, machine, uh, and AI, or, or software. It just needs to know these three distributions. And so it creates a very general and powerful system. OK, so let's just say in this case, it routed to uh, an AI. That, that's in our system, and, and we'll talk about uh, how these AI are generated. Let's say it routes to the super AI crowd, and let's just say it routes to Google AutoML via an API call, because these are one of the labelers. OK, then what happens is each of these labeling sources takes the input of the task and, and generates an output, we call these predictions. OK, now, now we move on to the next step of the combiner. So ultimately, what we want is we want a single answer for the label. Um, and you could, you could tie a distribution to this, but ultimately, you want a single distribution or, or a single output label. And so what the combiner does, and 
actually a really complex system, is it takes an important weighted combination of each of the predictions that came from each of the labeling sources and combines them in an intelligent way. Um, so it, it uses some really interesting statistics and uh, it actually uses a generative model uh, to do so. And so maybe you don't trust, like let's say for example, you had 10 people from a crowd and then you had one expert doctor and the doctor said this looks like cancer and the, and the 10 people said they didn't. Well, w which one do you trust? Do you say cancer or not cancer? Or how many people would it take to override the expert doctor? These are the type of questions the combiner answers. Okay, and then the next thing is it goes to the trainer. And so the trainer is also a very complex system and has different modules. And so one of the modules in the trainer is what we call the meta AI module. And so the meta AI module uh, is essentially a module that creates AI. That's why we call it meta AI. And so what it does then is it takes this high quality labeled data that was uh, ultimately combined in the combiner. And it takes a, actually a distribution uh, aware version of this output data. So it doesn't just say cancer or not cancer, it has uh, the distribution from the predictions and the objective function is actually a noise aware objective function. But those are details, we can talk about them later if you're interested. But what the trainer does is then it takes this input and output data and trains new machine learning models, AI models, and adds them to the database of labeling sources. And so the great thing is over time, the more data you label, then you get more and more of these machine learning models labeling the tasks. And as we recalled earlier, these tasks are very simple. And so over time, the router will route to less and less humans and, and more and more AI as they get smarter and smarter over this very narrow task. And so this is kind of where the key of scalability, cost, and, and speed come in. This is one of the key components. Um, so that's the meta AI submodule of the trainer. Um, we have another submodule which we call the, the, the BPU system. Um, so just like there's CPUs, central processing unit. We have BPU systems which we call brain processing units. And so this BPU system trains new humans um, and it does so automatically. Um, and it makes sure we pay them correctly, we keep them motivated. So machines run on electricity, but humans run on motivation. Uh, they run on uh, money, they run on a higher purpose, etc. So this BPU system also trains new humans. And so just like uh, with AI, you can train humans and have specialization of labor. So you can have more skilled humans, cheaper humans. And so the more humans you have here, the higher the domain of possible routing scenarios there are. So again, over time, you get higher quality, lower cost, and more scalability. Okay, and then finally, you have the measurement and QA system. And every one of these subsystems has trainable parameters. So you update these via reinforcement learning. We use a POMDP, a partially observed Markov decision process. It's all distribution and noise aware. And let's just say in this case, uh, the Google AutoML wasn't great for this task. So maybe you'd kick that out and you'd update the performance and you'd update all the distribution of the labeling sources. And so the great thing is that over time, not only does the system get more AI and more qualified humans, but you have these updated parameters. And so it gets not only higher quality, but it gets faster and cheaper and more scalable over, over time and for your specific application because it, it learns exactly from your data. So that was the Super AI Compiler in a nutshell. In the next video, we're gonna go into the Quality Assurance module, which is a really important module and I wanna take some time to provide you some details.